I believe you think that this whole reset should take place, but ultimately relations will get worse before they get better. So it's up to, to the two sides ultimately to find a rapprochement. And is there the willingness in Beijing or, or Delhi to do so? Yes, that's an excellent question. Let me first focus on why the relationship is where it is today. You know, there is an undemarcated, undefined boundary between India and China. And one of the prerequisites for the rest of the relationship to move forward is to ensure that there is peace and tranquility on the border. Now, earlier this summer, in early May, the Chinese PLA moved huge numbers of troops to what is called as the western sector of the India-China uh, border areas, uh, almost three, three and a half divisions of PLA troops. And therefore, there has been tension along the entire India-China frontier. Uh, now, the point is very simple, Rish, that if uh, you do not maintain peace and tranquility on the border, then the rest of the relationship cannot proceed as it has over the past 25 years. And as a result, India has indicated its displeasure by first banning uh, 59 Chinese apps, including the one which was very well known in India called TikTok, and now uh, banning power equipment from China. Ultimately, doesn't this move then, and or these tensions between the two, more or less force India into the camp of the quads with the Americans, the Australians and the Japanese in this part of the world, and in effect create almost a Cold War? Because India itself is surrounded by, I'm not going to call them client states, but certainly ones which are aligned with China. No, that's absolutely true. What you've said is absolutely true. And therefore, many of us who have worked with China over so many decades uh, just don't understand it. Because by this military move on the ground, what the Chinese have successfully done is pushed India into uh, the arms of the United States. Uh, and we will definitely um, strengthen our partnerships, not just with the U.S., but also with Japan, with Australia, with uh, countries like Indonesia. Um, and, uh, you know, we will strengthen our partnerships, not just in a political or a military sense, but also in economic sense. Uh, so I, I think that uh, it's uh, to us in India, we just don't understand what is the motivation for China to... Um, disturb the peace on the boundary, but the peace has been disturbed for the first time in over 45 years. Soldiers on both sides, both Indian soldiers and Chinese soldiers, have died on the on the frontiers between India and China. And therefore, uh, you know, if we cannot have peace on the border, then India is forced into uh, uh, into taking steps which will reduce the relationship, which will deteriorate the relationship. And as you said earlier, I see things getting worse before they can get better. Uh, Ambassador, also India then faces a, a terrible prospect, and that would be a conflict on two fronts. I'm talking also about, let's not forget that there, there are other border uh, tensions uh, towards the east uh, with the border near Sikkim, Tibet, Tibet and Nepal here as well. And let's not forget that there's also disputed Kashmir with Pakistan as well, and Pakistan and uh, China have a very close relationship. How worried are you about a militarized conflict? Look, we have been talking with China ever since this crisis started in early May. We have had uh, both talks at the military level as well as through diplomatic channels. And we are hoping that better sense prevails because, as our Prime Minister, Mr. Modi, said a few days ago, this is the time of development. Economic development should be the focus of all countries, not territorial expansionism. So uh, we, as a diplomat, I uh, think that, uh, you know, I hope better sense prevails. But, uh, of course, if push comes to shove, India is prepared for a two-front conflict. Uh, and, of course, our uh, armed forces are ready for the worst. So um, uh, from a strong military posture, we do hope that diplomacy will prevail.
Ambassador, you talked about how India is wondering the motivation behind China's move against uh, India. Some say that perhaps China is paranoid about what Indian Home Affairs Minister Amit Shah said about reclaiming Aksai Chin. What are your thoughts on that? Well, I, I think the main motivation is China's aggressiveness all around. I mean, uh, you can you have seen China's aggressiveness in putting in a new national security law in Hong Kong. Uh, China has been very aggressive in the South China Sea, and it has led to the United States sending two or three battle uh, carrier battle groups into the South China Sea. And I think it's the same aggressiveness which we are seeing on the India-China border. Um, so I, I would say that is uh, an important contributing factor. Uh, but I do hope that better sense will prevail because, uh, you know, um, we would like to settle this quietly through negotiations and diplomacy. Uh, but at the same time, where territorial integrity is concerned, as you can understand and as your listeners would understand, your viewers would understand, there can be no give. So I do hope better sense prevails. Quiet diplomacy has not worked, and you say that when push comes to shove, India is willing to go all out. Uh, what are the options then between that quiet diplomacy and going all out and taking on China? No, there is a whole series of options. You see, as I have said earlier, India has indicated its resolve not just on the ground through its military, but we have also uh, uh, told China or signaled to China that the rest of the relationship cannot remain as it is. The vast amounts of trade and investment which uh, uh, do exist between India and China cannot go ahead if the border is not peaceful. Um, so I'm expecting a few more measures of this kind to signal to China that, uh, that you know, we, India will not uh, stand for Chinese hegemony and will not stand for Chinese bullying. One of those measures is likely to be that Chinese firms may be banned from India's 5G trials and rollout, just as the UK has done quite recently. But, so but I think that will be a very, very important signal. Ambassador, such a move would come at a cost. Yes, absolutely. We we expect China to uh, to uh, retaliate, and it would come at a cost. There would be pain uh, for both India and China, and therefore I keep say, repeating that I do hope that a better sense prevails and that diplomacy, uh, discussion, negotiation can sort out whatever problems there are. And. With an escalation here, Ambassador, you know, how do you actually ultimately take the pressure, release the pressure out of all this? Uh, because both countries would rather actually deal with it themselves when perhaps external mediation is needed. Do you think that's ever going to be allowed by either Beijing or Delhi? No, I, I, you're absolutely right. Both India and China have said very clearly that we do not want any mediation. There are talks going on even as we speak, both between our militaries on the ground as well as through diplomatic channels. And the immediate need is to reduce the number of troops which have been built up by both sides uh, close to what is defined, what is called the line of actual control between India and China. Uh, so I think that is uh, something that both sides are looking forward to. Both sides have repeated that they will try to resolve this through discussion, negotiation, talks. Um, uh, but I do hope that happens soon, because when soldiers uh, from two militaries are in close proximity to each other, there could be incidents uh, like that which happened on the 15th of June, where scores of soldiers on both India and Chinese sides lost their lives. So I do hope that better sense prevails.